Hey everyone, this is Snark with Snark's Domain. Today we're going to be testing out different pads, putties, and shims on my Zotac 3070 Ti. Uh, the results are pretty exciting. We definitely have some viable options, so it just depends on what you're comfortable with with your cards, and uh, hopefully you guys find this information useful. So stay tuned. <music> Okay, so I tested out about a dozen different options for uh, pads, putties, and shims on this 3070 Ti. And uh, each time I would have it mined for an hour with the exact same overclock settings in the same computer. Um, everything else is the same, the fan speed, all that. Uh, just that the, the pad or putty or shim material was different each time. Uh, my voice sounds a little bit different just because I'm got a bit of a cold right now, but I decided I'm going to push through it and uh, try and get this video for you guys. So hopefully you guys find it useful. I'm going to play some of the highlights here of the disassembly, cleaning, and application and reassembly. Um, and then we'll get into the results after that.
right, so this section of the video is a little bit long-winded. Uh, if you want to skip ahead to the final results, I'm not going to be offended at all. So, uh, But let's get into it. So before I did all this testing, I just had the stock thermal pads on there, Mining Way and HiveOS uh, with the same computer setup. And I had a core temperature of 48 degrees Celsius and 106 on the VRAM. And that was with an absolute core clock of 990 megahertz and a plus 2000 on the memory. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with mining, that's the equivalent of plus 1000 megahertz on the memory inside Windows. Uh, I then made a video where I tested out some of the new Upsiren 3D graphite thermal pads, and I had TGPP10 uh, everywhere other than the VRAM. And here's kind of what it looks like. Uh, they're really compressible pads, but they are single use. You know, you put your card together, you take it apart again, the pad will fall apart and uh, you won't be able to reuse the pad. So just keep that in mind. But uh, what I was able to achieve was 51 degrees Celsius on the core and 78 degrees Celsius on the VRAM. And that was using the same overclock as the stock pads. I then increased the overclock to plus 2200 megahertz on the VRAM and that ended up giving us a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, and so these are the settings I used for the remainder of the tests and each time I would put it together, put it in the computer, put the side of the case on and mine for one hour, um, plus or minus like a minute or two. And it, it's usually pretty stable after 20 minutes, but I just wanted to keep things as consistent as possible. So. Next we have TGPP10. Uh, here you can see the application I used for it on the VRAM and that gave us 50 on the core, 92 on the VRAM. Uh, and TGPP10 is rated at 10 watts per meter Kelvin. Next I used uh, Pentium's TH930 and it's rated at 5 watts per meter Kelvin but it achieved the same results as TGPP10. Uh, 50 degrees on the core, 92 on the VRAM. So that's really awesome, especially now that TGPP10 is obsolete and discontinued. It looks like we've got some viable options and you can actually buy this stuff off DigiKey. Uh, next we've got Pentium's TH855-5. Uh, this is more of like a clay-like thermal putty. Um, it is still silicon based, but it's, uh, it's it actually feels really cool in the hands. It's almost like forming clay. Um, it's less sticky than TGPP10 or TH930 or GE8100. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's rated at five watts per meter Kelvin, but it actually achieved uh, 51 on the core and 90 on the VRAM. Next, we've got Pentium's TH949-1. Um, they also make a dash three, which is uh, less viscous. And I'm, I really hope to test that out at some point, but uh, here you can see I've rolled those little strips in there. Um, I don't have a piping bag filled with these yet, so um, maybe maybe someday. <laughs> it's expensive. And so this stuff is rated at uh, 12 watts per meter Kelvin, and it gave us a temperature of 51 degrees Celsius on the core, 84 on the VRAM, which is like really impressive. Here's what it looks like after pulling it apart. Um, it actually came apart fairly cleanly, but you can see I didn't have the perfect application. Uh, because the corners of the VRAM weren't covered. So maybe it would even achieve slightly better, but I'm going to assume it's pretty bang on for the results. Uh, next up, we've got JE8100. Uh, this is the putty I bought off of AliExpress, and it achieved uh, 51 on the core, 88 on the VRAM. It's rated at 10 watts per meter Kelvin. Here's what it looks like pulled apart. So it's very similar consistency to the TGPP10s, the TH930. And next up, we've got GLID Extreme pads. Uh, they're rated at 12 watts per meter Kelvin, and it got 52 on the core and 88 on the VRAM. Uh, next up, we've got GLID GP Ultimates, uh, rated at 15 watts per meter Kelvin. I had to stack um, one millimeter pads. I didn't have any two, two millimeter left, so kind of unfortunate for testing, but that's just what I had to do. But still, it got us 53 on the core and 86 on the VRAM. So it did a pretty good job cooling the VRAM. And next up, we've got GPRisers.com, uh, 20 watts per meter Kelvin pads. I forgot to take a top-down picture, but uh, as you can see, that got us 52 on the core, 
86 on the VRAM. Uh, next up, we've got the critical pads. They're also rated at 20 watts per meter Kelvin, and that got us 51 on the core and 90 on the VRAM. All right, next we've got 1.6 millimeter aluminum shims plus TGPP10 thermal putty. Uh, I put the eye in there for you, Ghost. <laughs> And it gave us 52 on the core and 72 on the memory. And next we did copper shims with TGPP10. And that got us 53 on the core and 72 on the memory. And then we went with Pensham's TH949-1. Something I hope to get used to saying. <laughs> and copper shims. And that got us an incredible 68 degrees Celsius on the VRAM. But it was a little bit warmer on the core at 55. Uh, that's pretty impressive it would even dip down to 66 occasionally so that's it for the results um, and let's put it into a chart here for you guys all right so this first chart shows uh, temperatures and also thermal conductivity ratings just for reference but you know in my opinion those are never super accurate based on it being from different manufacturers and I don't know how they're doing their testing, but uh, <laughs> I don't think it lines up perfectly with real world results. Uh, but I've got a second chart here where I've got them. It's a little bit of a nicer looking chart, I guess. And let's talk about it a little bit because you do have options. Um, you don't have to go with the highest performing one just because, right? You might not be comfortable with doing copper or aluminum shims. You might not want to spend the time, you know, putting capped on tape on and so then if you don't go with any shims at all, your best performing one is going to be the Upsiren 3D graphite pads. Uh, but those are single use. So, you know, you put your card together and then let's say you want to replace the thermal paste in two years and you pull your card apart. Well, those pads are going to fall apart and you're going to need to replace them again. So keep that in mind. And they're also not, not the cheapest, but they are quite effective. Uh, now, that being said, they do conduct electricity if you scrape through that phase change coating. So uh, just those are just things to keep in mind, but it is a good product. Um, if you didn't want to have anything that was electrically conductive, but you wanted the absolute best performance without crossing that barrier, then you would go with Pensham's TH949-1 putty. Um, it's beating out, you know, GLID GP Ultimate pads, GPU riser pads, GLID extreme pads. That's crazy. It's rated at 12 watts and it's beating out stuff, you know, rated higher than it. So, um, super impressive product. Uh, if you wanted to go with traditional pads and you didn't want to use 3D graphite pads because of the, the single use scenario, you could either go with uh, GLID GP ultimates or GPU riser pads. Now, GP ultimates do leak oil over time. Uh, even after a couple months of at least mining. Now in a gaming scenario, you're, well, you're still gaming for, you know, three, four hours at a time, maybe longer. They're still going to leak oil over time. Uh, I haven't tested GPU riser pads long enough to know if they leak oil. So if, if you have a card that, and you've been running these for a while and have disassembled it, uh, let us know in the comments what your experience has been that way. Um, if you just wanted to use putty, and you didn't want to go to the expense of Pensham's TH949. Um, you've got some good options. You've got uh, JE8100 putty, which you can buy in 10 gram containers off AliExpress for like three, four dollars a pop. So, you know, you'd probably go through, yeah, between 50 and 70 grams of JE on a video card. Uh, you want to buy more than you need. But if you just have one card, that's probably the way to go. Um, because you don't have to buy a large quantity to bring the overall cost down. Now, if you have lots of cards and you want great performance, uh, I would still recommend the TH949. Uh, if you want to go with a little bit cheaper putty and use shims, then either Pensham's 855-5 or their TH930 putty, or if you can get it, TGPP10, which really... You know, TGPP10 and Pensham's TH930 have the exact same performance from these tests. So um, it's great that we finally have a good replacement for the putty that we all fell in love with. But uh, anyways, I guess all of these solutions are better than the stock thermal pads. So you really can't go wrong by upgrading your thermal pads.
And hopefully you guys have found this data and testing useful for you and you guys can make a more informed decision uh, for what solution you want to use. So that's it for this one. Uh, it's a bit of a longer video, but thanks for sticking with us and I'll catch you guys on the next one.